is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're going to look at a data center. What does this data center contain and how they're structured and what sort of equipment runs inside of the data center. So here we are inside of a data center. So this is a, a site where essentially computer equipment lives. So there are actually cabinets configured with cabling running from the top. Uh, power as well as fiber and ethernet cables and other connectors as need be running into equipment located inside of these cabinets. So you can sort of see there are devices, there are servers, there is network switches and routers and other bits and pieces, storage devices running into cabinets like so. So every single data center will be slightly different, some will be laid out differently to others. So this particular data center is different cabinets depending on what sort of services and what sort of company is running into these particular sites. You see here the number of cables and connections running into this particular data center. These cabinets themselves will be keyed, will be protected. Uh, these particular ones will have a standard key. The more upper model um, versions could be uh, you know, swipe cards, you could swipe, they could be fingerprint ones as well where you get access to your actual racks uh, via those more advanced security measures. See out of this one, for example, you've got a whole lot of cabling running out from the top of the device, top of the cabinet, into the roof, and that will then in turn run into a different cabinet or out into the street, uh, perhaps into other uh, rooms in the data center or into alternate locations altogether. Cables could then be generally bunched up and running through trays like this on the roof. All right, they're going to be neatly cabled and tied together, running into the different locations in the room. These are Cisco switches, the 10 gigabit switches, and you see that all of my blue cables, which are all my data cables, are running right into this particular switch, which then connects to a number of services to get me into the network, essentially network connectivity. So here we've got the back of the switch. So obviously we've got all the cables running into the front from our patch panels. Our switch itself has dual powers, one going to the left, one going to the right. So in the event that I have a power outage, um, in the event that I have a power supply go down, I've got a second one that can continue operating. These particular switches are set up in what's called a stack. So they've got propriety cables that are running from one switch to another switch and actually seen as single units. So they're actually stacked in one big group. So here we've got a server. This is a rack mounted server. You see the brand is Dell EMC. So you've got a traditional computer, which is your standard laptop or your desktop. In this case, this is a rack mountable server, which is actually spread into this particular rack. This is what's called a 2RU, which is rack unit server. So this is a, in terms of the size, uh, a 1RU is generally half of this size and it just really indicates the size or the actual, um, the height of a particular rack mounted device. So every rack mounted device will have a particular RU rack unit uh, number associated to it. So if I just open this thing up, you'll see that this is just a, really it's just a fancy computer. It's got a number of different hard drives inside. It's got a standard VGA port, it's got a display to let me know what's going on. I can power it on and off. Uh, it's got CPU, it's got a RAM, it's got some uh, other internal graphics cards, etc., etc. Uh, but a lot more strong than a standard desktop computer or a standard laptop computer. So there you go, that is a server, and then obviously to the back of that, that is then connected into a switch, which is what we saw before, and then given network access as normal. Here is a, another rack band server, another 2RU server. This is a Think Center. This is done by IBM slash Lenovo. You see there's a couple of SAS 1.2 terabyte drives. This particular server is acting as a host for ESXi. So this is VMware's virtualization environment. So you see the front of it there, you've got a couple of USB sticks. There's some LED indicators to let you know what's going on and then the same power button. Servers and other devices will generally have your dual powers as well. So 
that if the left one goes down, if this power supply dies, the server doesn't actually go down, it can still be operational because it has two power supplies running out of it. This in turn will then run into a left and right power uh, board or power supply via a power rack into the left and right of the cabinet, and in turn that would run into your backup power. And in the back of your servers, you've got your cables, which will be running into switches. And then you'll see that the server itself has a number of slots available where I can add additional uh, cards, peripheral cards into there. Got my ethernet ports for gigabit, etc., etc. for remotely controlling it. Got storage units, right? So these are all just full of discs. I essentially pull these out, right? Put in brand new discs in here, and they get everything nice and beefy in terms of capacity. This is an example of a smaller, lower end NAS. This is by a brand called Synology. Essentially, this is just a uh, rack mounted device um, for storage. So a number of hard drives, you see there's all these hard drives connected. You can then get multiple arrays, disk arrays, that plug in underneath this to expand uh, your storage array. Synology is one brand, you've got other ones like QNAP. But then if you go more enterprise, you've got like the Dell EMCs, you've got uh, NetApps, you've got other uh, larger scale vendors that can do some pretty cool uh, storage um, SAN and NAS capabilities and they can be expanded pretty significantly. So in almost every rack setup, uh, there will be some form of firewall, whether that is built in via a router acting as a firewall or dedicated firewall. So in this case, we've got a brand called Fortinet uh, we've got a couple of different firewalls for redundancy. So if one firewall goes out, the other one can pick it up. We're setting a high availability setup. And essentially all of my traffic will flow in and out via these firewalls. The firewalls will control the security, what ports, what traffic, what IPs are allowed through it. And then from here, it'll then direct the traffic over to the internet, uh, over to you know my, my links, over to a modem out to the internet, for example, or, or directly out onto the street or into an alternate building. So other brands of uh, firewalls would be your Cisco, you've got ASAs, you've got Junipers as well. Um, you've got uh, Sophos, there's a whole bunch of other brands as well that do some pretty high-end firewalls around the enterprise space. So you see that power is fed into PDUs, right? This is essentially a power distribution unit. You see all my powers are running into the one side here, similar one on the left side. And then these would then be similarly going into different phases, into different power outlets uh, coming into my building. Power is then distributed as like so. Here we've got the back of the server cabinet. So these all indicate you know, the, the plugs where the actual uh, servers are going to be racking into, the actual switches, the routers, etc., are all going to be railed against this. They're then screwed in. Different servers have got different uh, connectors to be able to connect into these units so that I can easily rack devices directly into the cabinet itself and keep it all nice and neat. Most data centers will contain large enterprise grade industry standard um, UPS or generator type of units. This is for backup power. Right? So you've got big devices like that, like so, running into all of your power. You have big powers at the top. So generally these will be running into those big UPSs, those big generators that we've seen for the backup power. So this will go and power the actual individual cabinets themselves. So there you have it. There is a basic overview of a data center and sort of the structure on how the data center is sort of laid out. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would love it if you commented below and uh, we will talk to you next time.